1940, there were only a few people outside of those living on the Navajo Nation who could speak the Navajo language. During World War II, that fact would become important when young men from this community were asked to become what we today know as code talkers. Roy Hawthorne was one of them. He was born on the Navajo Reservation near Ganado, Arizona, and remembers boarding school years in the 1930s, a time when speaking his native language was discouraged. The uh, boarding schools were the main implement that the federal government was using to uh, discourage uh, speaking Native American languages. In 1940, only about 30 non-Navajo could speak the language. In the early 1900s, German universities sent professors to the U.S. to study Native American languages. They didn't come out here because uh, actually nobody came out here except, except if you had to. Philip Johnston, a veteran of World War I, was one of the few non-Navajo who knew the language. His family had lived near Flagstaff, Arizona. At the outbreak of World War II, Johnston presented the idea of Navajo code talkers to the Marine Corps. Initial tests proved fruitful, yet there were skeptics. Another thing that convinced them that it might, it might work was the fact that it took zero time encoding, zero time decoding. The Navajo code would prove unbreakable by the Japanese. There were initially 29 code talkers. Eventually, nearly 400 would serve in the role. The Navajo encoded letters and words to transmit their messages. The letter A in English, uh, we would have three Navajo words to encode the letter A, uh, which would be, uh, in English, it would be apple, ant, and axe. Some military words didn't exist in the Navajo language, so a fighter plane became a hummingbird and a submarine was an iron fish. Roy explains how to construct the message, Hill 234 secured. So we want to, we want to say uh, Hill, so we use the uh, code letter for the letter H, which is horse, and then we have I-L-L, sick. So we would say sick horse, that's Hill. And for the word secured, the word sheep represented the letter S. The code talker would say sheep cured, which meant secured. Hill 234 secured would sound like <laughs> Code talkers were an important part of the war in the Pacific, yet few people outside of the Navajo and high-ranking military commanders actually understood what they were doing in battle. When they arrived on the battlefield in uh, Guadalcanal, and began uh, transmitting, it uh, confused everybody. Japanese didn't know what was happening. Nobody knew what was happening. When the war was over and the code talkers discharged, they were told not to speak of their work. Roy had two brothers who were also code talkers. None of them discussed their role in the military for 26 years until the work was declassified. Today, Roy makes his home near Window Rock. It is here that he served as a church pastor. God has his hand in everything. And, and, and God had it all planned out that uh, this language was going to be used to help win the war for democracy. Roy Hawthorne faithfully served his country as a code talker in World War II. He came back home to serve his community and his church as well. It's a story of inspiration for all of us. Traveling the countryside near Window Rock, Arizona, I'm Andrew McRae.